Tips to Self-Fulfillment in Life by Pastor Sunday Adelajar. You are greater than who you are now. Does that surprise you? It shouldn't really. Most of us intuitively sense it that we are actually greater than who we are right now. Do you sometimes feel that you have not really done what you came to this world for yet? No matter your achievements at present, yet inside, you know you are greater. Let yourself be drawn by the stronger pull of that which you truly love. Rumi yes, it could be that there are some people who have not quite given it a consideration, that is actually very sad. We should all give it a consideration time and time again. We should take time to look inside ourselves to ask that all important question. Am I really living a fulfilled life or not? If you take a careful look at yourself, you will probably come to the same conclusion that you are greater than who you are right now. The question now would be, how to bring out that greater self that is in you. It is in discovering and releasing the greater self in you that you enjoy fulfillment. We all aspire to have a fulfilled life. We all dream of living life to the full. That journey has to start with you acknowledging the fact that you are greater than what you are presently seeing of yourself. Another variation of this truth is that you are greater than what you have done. We all have done something in our lives that we are proud of. Yet some have not done much in that regard. But we tend to want to relax on our oars, especially when we feel that we have done some things that others have not done. The temptation to take a back seat and enter into a comfort zone is all ever great. No matter who you are, no matter what you did, no matter where you've come from, you can always change, become a better version of yourself. Madonna when we challenge ourselves with the thought that we are greater than what you have done, then we make it more difficult for ourselves to take a back seat. We could then realize that no matter the height and size of what we have done, there is always room for greater achievements. So friends, you are greater than what you have done. Have you done anything at all? How much have you done? Do you think most achievements of your life have already been accomplished? Are they still in front of you? No matter the answer you give, the fact still remains that you are greater than what you have done. Don't compromise yourself. You're all you've got. Janis Joplin has said earlier, you need to look inside yourself and search for those greater things you can still do. There are greater achievements in you. There are greater heights in front of you. There is a greater glory hidden in you. There is a greater beauty in your destiny. There is a brighter future ahead of you. You are greater than what you are right now and you are greater than what you have done. Talking about tips to self-fulfillment, it is essential that we lay the foundation of self-fulfillment as we have just done above. Another aspect of self-fulfillment that I want to talk about is that God in His wisdom has decided to make us in His image and likeness. As God's image and likeness, we are to operate on the earth to some extent like God Himself. Our God is an infinite God, meaning that He's everlasting. He doesn't go on retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk on that for a moment. It is understandable why God would not go on retirement because He doesn't get tired. He doesn't have a body so he doesn't need rest. He doesn't get old so he doesn't need vacation. But how could all that relate to us who are mere mortals, who get tired, who get older by the day? Don't we need retirement? That is an aspect of God that we all could actually explore. Yes, God showed us that on earth while we are operating the laws of nature, those laws must still be observed. God himself showed us the example by taking a day out to rest on the seventh day of creation. That should tell us that God recognizes the need for men to recuperate through rest, vacation and indeed retirement. When it comes to retirement however, I think retirement from an occupation or a government job is totally different from retirement from work altogether. A careful look at the heroes of the Bible tells us that they do not recognize retirement as we do today. To be what we are, and to become what we are capable of becoming, is the only end of life. Robert Louis Stevenson Abraham, who was a friend of God, could not be said to have retired per se. Retirement for the heroes of the Bible comes mainly as eternal rest. In that way, a person keeps on evolving all throughout his life on earth. That means, I and you could actually keep on fulfilling ourselves till we leave this earth. If we were to retire from all forms of work, then we would be retiring from the process of fulfillment. Fulfillment and creativity, 
are supposed to be continuous in every person's life as long as he or she is alive. What I am trying to say is that, we need to think of fulfillment in terms of a lifetime project. We are bigger than what we are, we are greater than we are right now. Meaning that greatness could keep on manifesting itself in us as long as we are alive. We are greater than what we have done. That tells us also that no matter what we have done as long as we have breath in our nose, we could still keep doing even greater and greater things. Fulfillment is a lifetime project. That is why the heroes of the Bible did not retire from fulfillment. The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential these are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Confucius Isaac did not retire. His retirement was like that of Abraham, in death, eternal rest is their retirement. Jacob was actively involved in solving family issues. He was noted to have undertaken one of the most important journeys in the Bible at a very old age. These people kept on functioning, becoming bigger and greater, as they grew older. Even though most of the disciples of Jesus Christ in the New Testament were tragically murdered, yet the fact still remains that they kept on fulfilling their callings and purposes on earth even in the very face of death. This shows us another truth about fulfillment. Nothing can stop it. Nothing should stop it. Death could take you away, but before that happens, you can still keep on fulfilling yourself even in the very face of death. Apostle Paul lived a life of fulfillment till his very last breath. Apostle John, like other disciples lived a fulfilled life. Unlike the others though, he is the only one that was not murdered. He lived till old age, fulfilling his calling and ministry. I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, the greatest fulfillment of all that he holds dear, is the moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. Vince Lombardi all these people did not bother themselves about retirement, they understood the importance and the continuity of self-fulfillment. That type of understanding would do all of us a lot of good in our lives today. Our everyday must be lived in such a way that we strive to experience fulfillment one way or another. Principles of fulfilling yourself point one, don't be satisfied with your present achievements. Ladies and gentlemen, there's much more in you to give to the world than you can imagine. There is so much more for you to do. Self-satisfaction is one of the greatest hindrances to self-fulfillment. Once you think you are already okay, it becomes more difficult for you to give your best into what you are doing. Comfort zone is a big challenge in our generation today. Comfort zones create in us a sense of false fulfillment. Comforting us that we deserve to take a break. Sometimes we use physical standards to determine our fulfillments. Some people think if they could have a family with a number of cars, a house and a nice paying job, then they are fulfilled. This is a false comfort. Some other people think they would be fulfilled if they could finish their education and get a nice paying job. No man can begin to mold himself on a faith or an idea without rising to a higher order of experience. George Eliot, all these aspirations are what keep us self-satisfied. That false feeling of self-fulfillment deprives us of the future we could have. It robs us of the energy that could be put into generating new ideas and pursuing their fulfillment. Feelings of satisfaction on the other hand, makes you just to stop at the level you are. Physical parameters like job, family status, salary, don't equate self-fulfillment. Fulfillment of self is much greater than attaining a status in a society. It's much greater than a comfortable lifestyle. Self-fulfillment is much greater than seeing your children and grandchildren. Self-fulfillment is greater than what could be measured physically or materially. One of the greatest gifts you can give to yourself is to refuse to be satisfied with where you are. Your desire and continuous passion will perpetually open doors of fulfillment to you. The examples I gave earlier of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Paul and John, tells us that if these people had become satisfied at an early stage of their achievements, we would not be talking about them as we are today. As a matter of fact, they all performed greater feats towards the end of their lives. That is why successful people never get satisfied with any degree of success they attain. To them, success is a lifetime journey of discovery.
They realize that life is an adventure of a lifetime in releasing your hidden potentials. Be who God meant you to be and you will set the world on fire. Catherine of Siena.2 Don't compare yourself to others. Too many people stop by the wayside on the path to achievements because they compare themselves to people worse than them. Many of us try to feel good about ourselves by looking at those who are worse than us. While it would be a temporary solace, it is never a good solution. We should really only compare ourselves with our calling, mission and potentials. We don't compare ourselves with what we have already done. We don't compare ourselves with what others have done. Our goal should be to compare ourselves with the potentials God has put in us. Our race is against the mandate of God upon our lives. We look for God's expectations of us and strive to fulfill it. Within you, you will find everything you need to be complete. Brian McGill, if you look around enough, you will always find people who are doing worse than you. It helps you to feel like a local hero of course, but that kind of practice doesn't help you to become all God wants you to be. So, this is a golden rule for those who want to come to fulfill themselves. Don't compare yourself to others. Yes, there are cases when comparing yourself with those better than you would inspire you and encourage you to do better. As nice and as cool as that sounds, what happens when you don't have such individuals around to emulate? Even though it is a nice idea to have a model before you, whose height you aspire to, yet the greatest motivation should be what is coming from within you. Your calling, your purpose, your potential and your abilities. Strive to become the best version of your original self. That's where your true fulfillment in life lies. Edmund Mbiaka.3 You can't change anything you are willing to tolerate. If you want to truly come to self-fulfillment, be careful of those things you tolerate. If you tolerate friends who while away your time, you might never be able to easily get rid of them. If you tolerate TV and TV programs, that would become a menace that you will not be able to surmount. If you tolerate empty talk and chats on telephone, you will discover that it is becoming more and more difficult for you to overcome. If you tolerate laziness, you will find it more difficult to break out of it. If you tolerate substandard quality, you would not be able to break out of that circle. If you tolerate that others decide your future and your destiny, you will find it almost impossible to be able to make your own decisions. If you tolerate drinking and smoking, you become addicted to that. If you tolerate daydreaming and empty fantasies, those things will stand in your way of self-fulfillment. What we tolerate, we empower. Tolerating means giving up some of your power. Tolerating means giving up your resistance. Tolerating is refusing to resist. Tolerating is an unwillingness to fight. That is why it becomes incredibly difficult to change those things we tolerate. Because you have given them permission to exact a limited authority over you. That limited authority, however, could easily become a full-fledged dominion over you, if you tolerate it long enough. In that case, what we tolerate does not only become extremely difficult to change, but worse still what we tolerate often has dominion over us. You are the only real obstacle on your path to a fulfilling life. Les Brown, for example, a person that gives himself to smoking once in a while, would soon discover that he has come under its power, resulting in addiction. A person who allows himself the pleasure of sometimes watching pornography, would soon discover that he practically cannot stop it any longer. That is total dominion because of a little permission given. So ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to be fulfilled in life, there are some things you don't want to tolerate or permit. Those things you permit will either stop your fulfillment or enhance your fulfillment. So be careful of those things you permit in your life. Point four crisis are not tragedies, they are traffic lights. Many people have failed to be fulfilled in life simply because they encountered some form of crisis or difficulty in life. Friends let's face it, there is no one that would ever come to fulfillment or any great height in life without encountering challenges, problems, difficulties and crisis. Problems are a part of life. The faster we get used to that thought the better for us. Problems are not meant to stop you on your way of progress. They are there to propel you forward. How many dreams have died just because difficulties arose on the way? 
how many projects have been abandoned because some problems arose in the cause of pursuing them. Too many destinies are cut short of their best, because troubles arose in their path. That is why we must be conscious enough of the fact that crises don't come to stop us. Every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed on an equal or greater benefit. Napoleon Hill One of the most constructive ways of maximizing crises to our benefit is to look at them as traffic lights. In life sometimes, situations arise that are like red lights to us. At such times we know we must have a temporary stoppage and we must allow some things to come to pass before we again possess the permit to move forward, full speed. At other times, it is the yellow light we encounter. Crisis, challenges and troubles that don't entirely stop us but slow us down. They too have their own benefits. Not every crisis in life would be as green light. As paradoxical as that might sound, we pass through different circumstances in life that at first glance would look like unpleasant troubles. However, in the long run, these circumstances could actually work out for our good, thereby becoming a green light for our acceleration in life. So crises could act as wake-up calls to us. They come to prevent us from dropping into a relaxed mode in our pursuit of self-fulfillment. Most of us will eventually have to look back and thank God for some of our crises because crisis might at times be used by God, to remove us from mediocrity of life. Some other crises are used to lead us into new discoveries, new horizons and new inventions. At other times, challenges, problems, troubles and crisis come, so that we don't remain as we are today. When we remain in the same place for too long because we are enjoying the comfort of it, we can never become our future. If you always do the same thing all over again, you would most likely not get new results. You will only get the same old results you are used to getting. Sometimes you need a little crisis to get your adrenaline flowing and help you realize your potential. Jeanette Walls To achieve new heights, we have to do new things. Therefore, crisis, circumstances and problems will often come to our lives as an instrument in the hand of God to move us out of mediocrity into our destiny. Point 5. Faith is inevitable for you to come to fulfillment in life you need faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith is the ability to keep on moving ahead, because you are sure what you are believing God for, you will receive. Faith is the assurance that the result you are hoping for will not pass you by. Faith is the confidence that causes you to work and labor expecting a definite result. Faith is the ability to see ahead into those things physical eyes cannot yet see. Faith is the ability not just to see into the future, but to forge out into fulfilling it. Faith is the ability to see and live by those things that are not yet in the physical realm. Romance 1 verse 17 tells us that the just shall live by faith. Faith is an instrument of life. We live with it and we live by it. Through living by faith, we see those things that have not yet been accomplished in our lives through the eyes of faith. Then we step out risking everything in the assurance that what we are believing God for, we shall definitely have. Faith is an inevitability when it comes to fulfillment of vision. There would be so many discouraging incidences on your way to fulfillment. At such a time, you will only have faith to cling to. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. Martin Luther King Jr. Without faith nobody accomplishes anything. Without faith self-fulfillment is impossible. It is through faith, the assurance that we get what we are believing for, that we overcome in this world. We overcome discouragements, we overcome failures, we overcome disillusionments, we overcome failings, etc. Faith takes us through the dark hours of life into the bright prospects of the dawn. Point 6. To be fulfilled in life you must discover your calling. As humans we all can engage ourselves in various occupations and professions. But true fulfillment comes only when you do what you are created to do. Everybody can get a job, but what is important is to fulfill destiny. You are created for a particular assignment on the earth. Whatever you do, please discover your purpose. When your life goal is known, you don't waste time wandering about life. When you know where you are going, you don't spend life beating about the bush. God your creator knows what he created you for, 
So the easiest way to discover your calling is to ask God about it. You were created in the image of God. And it is only through God that you can find the true meaning of life. And it is only through God that you can truly find fulfillment. And it is only through God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you can be saved. Calvin W. Allison People that are sure of their callings become fulfilled faster in life. People that discover their callings will more easily achieve greatness than those who don't know where they are going. The discovery of your purpose would accelerate your fulfillment. Point 7. Your dream is a myth without work. The Acts of the Apostle in the Bible was called the way it is called because people acted. If they didn't act, there would be nothing to write about. For you to be fulfilled in life, you have to always be proactive. Hard work is the way if you want to truly be fulfilled. Nothing happens of a serious consequence on earth without hard work. There can be no richer man or woman than the individual who has found his or her labor of love. Personal fulfillment through the virtue of work is the highest form of desire. Work is the conduit between the supply and the demand of all human needs, the forerunner of human progress, and the medium by which the imagination is given the wings of action. A labor of love is exalted because it provides joy and self-expression to those who perform it. Dennis Kimbrough when Jesus saw the enormous harvest of souls, he didn't ask for preachers and evangelists. He asked for laborers. It doesn't matter what your title is, what matters is your ability to work hard. Hard work is the wealth of the poor man. If you can work hard, you are a wealthy man. It is this wealth of hard work that converts everything else into cash and currency. A hard working man is a rich man because he could through hard work discover himself and the hidden potentials in him. Hard work is the gift God gave to humanity. Through it we don't just discover ourselves, more so, through hard work we discover the hidden resources in the earth. Hard work allows us to unearth the oil reserves. It is the same hard work that allows us to enjoy the beauty of diamond, gold and other precious metals. Through hard work, we make the world a better place. We produce products for others. We are able to feed ourselves and our families. Hard work is an essential ingredient in self-fulfillment. It doesn't matter what gifts you possess, if you cannot work hard, you will never come to fulfillment. Ladies and gentlemen, it is mediocrity that wants to cause us to follow the norm. It causes us to accept the status quo. It places before us a societal limit as the height of our aspiration. That is not a place for anyone to be, who wishes to totally fulfill himself. The average pleases the crowd. So many people want to simply be an average person. Average in their goals. Average in their fulfillment and average in their achievements. These type of people's primary concern is to please the crowd. They don't want to be disliked by the majority. That desire not to be rejected, keeps them down in the place for the commons. That is not a place for those who want to give a good report to God about their sojourn on earth. For you to be fulfilled, you must be determined never to please the crowd. People who are fulfilled in life would normally go against the norms. They create their own norms. Those who leave a mark in the history of their generation don't follow the laid down standards of men. They would usually create their own standards. Traditions can't hold back true history makers. They break out of the limitations of tradition and culture. They create their own order. They open new grounds for themselves and chart new paths for others. Friends, we have been through a long and interesting journey together in the course of this article. It is my hope that the principles and tips that were offered here, will add to you more values than before you came across this piece. Remember you are more than you what you're right now. You are greater than what you have done. Look into yourself. Embark on the journey. Become the best you could be. Experience fulfillment every day. Make yourself happy. Cause people to rejoice. Let heaven break forth in celebration because of what you have been able to accomplish with your life. Go for it. Don't just spend life, attain fulfillment. For the love of God, Church and Nation by Pastor Sunday Adelajar. Church and Nation by Pastor Sunday Adelajar. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Now, we need to spread this word, and we need to do it together. For that to happen, we need your help. Just five little steps that you could help us to spread the word. 
Number one thing we need you to do is to like the videos. Please go like this video right now. Number two, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Number three, we need you to press and click on that notification bell. You see the bell? Go press on it. And number four, we need you to go comment. Write your comment, good or bad, just write what you feel. Number five, share, share, share. Share on every platform. Share on Instagram. Share on Facebook. Just share and spread the word. Thank you so much.